undercover drug detectives on a mission. The Lewis County Joint Narcotics Task Force, JNET, enters a building in search of illegal drugs in this body camera footage obtained by King 5 through a public records request. We have to get it out of the locker, put it in a bag. It wouldn't be that unusual, except this place is a state government building, the Green Hill School. How common is it to get a search warrant against another government agency? I've never been a part of that in my 30 plus years in law enforcement. Centralia Police Chief Stacy Denham was there in August. Mainly what we're looking for is drugs. Random pills, candy bars, fentanyl, uh, THC. When JNET handed the school superintendent a court ordered search warrant. We'd gotten a tip that there were some evidence lockers that contained large amounts of contraband. Green Hill is Washington's maximum security facility for juvenile offenders, serving sentences for things like rape, murder, and robbery. It's no place for drugs or weapons. Was a search warrant really the only way to go and get this stuff? Well, no, they could have voluntarily given it to us. But uh, they didn't. But they didn't. Why wouldn't the State Department of Children, Youth, and Families, which runs juvenile facilities, cooperate? We took that question right to the top. They had to get a search warrant to go inside a government agency. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds crazy. Law enforcement did raise some issues. I think there was some miscommunication that occurred that was really unfortunate. Washington Governor Jay Inslee and DCYF dispute that there is a lack of cooperation with police and that a search warrant was even necessary. Yeah, it's unusual. There was some miscommunication. If, if they called a little higher in the food chain, I think that would have got resolved. But here's the thing. The King 5 investigators obtained this letter sent directly to Governor Inslee by Lewis County leaders two months before JNET sought a search warrant. They described Green Hill drug overdoses, security concerns, and employee misconduct that was not reported to police. A reply came weeks later. The governor's office is declining to refer this matter to the attorney general's office for further investigation. They felt like they were brushed off. Well, I can assure you that we have made improvements there, in part because some of these uh, concerns have been raised. That is not the case. Nothing has been corrected, mm. and which is incredibly frustrating. If you want to unlock them all. The search warrant confirmed JNet's suspicions. And that thing is jam full. Holy smoke. Oh, Lockers in the back of Green Hill's laundry room overflowed with contraband seized over the years. We found stuff in those lockers is dating back to 2017. Why would they still be holding on to it? That's a great question. We don't know. It was well over 100 pieces of contraband. By statute, they're not allowed to hold on to it. They are supposed to turn that over to law enforcement. Police say they were never called by Green Hill administrators as staff seized blue fentanyl pills, weapons like the shank, and sneakers with drugs hidden in the shoe tongue. Detectives wheeled away a cart full of bagged evidence, over 100 felony cases from the last six years that were never recorded to police, according to documents. It's not just the juvenile offenders inside this facility. Law enforcement also has concerns about crooked staff. Most employees are honest, and police say they're best source of Green Hill tips. But others have been arrested for contraband smuggling, having sex with students, and two have links to drive-by shootings. When I first got there, I was in a, I was in like regular population, but then you know, I started getting into a lot of fights, so that, that was in the whole whole time. This is 20-year-old Daniel Racinos last year, in custody again two weeks after his release from Green Hill. He was accused of firing shots randomly in this Centralia neighborhood from behind the wheel of a car owned by Leandra Calhoun. She was his counselor in the maximum security unit at Green Hill. They knew exactly and had set up an, uh, an agreement when this person got out that this is where this person was going to go. They were going to meet up. And this is, is something that I would say is completely unacceptable. We tried to reach Calhoun, who served prison time for robbery 10 years before she was hired by Green Hill. She told police she'd been riding in her car with Racinos. When he pointed a handgun at her and stole her car, she told police she had nothing to do with the shooting, and through a lawyer, she declined to comment. The case shows how the problems inside Green Hill can spill out into the community. I've seen a bullet hole right there in the window, about, about right here. Bill Kale can vouch for that. He heard gunshots, and the next morning found a bullet hole in his window. Police say it's a stray round fired by Daniel Racino last year from his former Green Hill counselor's car. Obviously, if they're not, uh, you know, doing their job over there, they need to, you know, 
get it taken care of. Four years ago, King 5 exposed hundreds of assaults in Green Hill, many of them on staff, that were not reported to authorities. It's a pattern of Green Hill administrators keeping their secrets behind the razor wire fence. And it is a huge problem that is being continually ignored by everybody, it appears. Uh, I'm confident going forward this is going to get taken care of. Law enforcement in Lewis County intends to hold the governor to that. DCYF, the agency that runs uh, Green Hill, emphasizes that the school is a rehabilitation facility. That is an important point, and maybe that's why they've hesitated to report kids they've caught with drugs. But police say there also needs to be accountability and safety inside that school. There was a fentanyl overdose that nearly killed a student inmate a year ago, uh, and we've heard all the stories about that killer drug. So who's ever smuggling in that and dealing it in Green Hill, they need to pay the price. That's the bottom line, say police. And we heard the chief say that Green Hill officials withheld some of that evidence yeah. from police. So could they face charges because of that? Yeah, uh, it's, it's not that likely. Uh, the police are investigating students, visitors, staff who might be connected to these cases. But the chief says, no, it's unlikely that administrators would face charges for the failure to turn overseas drugs because there's been changes in leadership. There's been big employee turnover and things that really make it kind of messy to pursue an actual criminal case. Still there. blown away. Prove More it. than wow. five years stuff has been held in lockers. There's no good explanation for that. There's really not. <laughs> and so much of it. Yeah. Wow. Right. Great reporting. Thanks, Thank Chris. you. Thank you.